So this video describes my experiences uh, installing a DroPros 2L DRO kit onto my Grizzly G0602 lathe. Now this kit cost about $700 with the options that I got. I have a uh, one micron scale for the X and a five micron standard scale for the Z. Um, one of the nice things you get with going with Dro Pros is that you get pretty good uh, printed instructions. Um, now these aren't gonna tell you exactly how to do it because uh, every kit has to be adapted to your lathe, but uh, it's really nice that you get uh, some printed instructions and some idea of how to proceed and also know that these guys are just a phone call away in California if you need to talk to them for support, which thankfully I did not. Here you see everything you get in the kit, uh, you know, napkins and candlestick holders not included. Um, you've got the display there in the upper left uh, that's in a nice die cast metal enclosure. You've got the uh, longitudinal scale down at the very bottom along with its uh, coolant cover just above it. You've got the uh, cross slide scale just above that, uh, some mounting bracketry that you have to adapt for your lathe, uh, and there's a uh, power cord and a bracket to hold the display unit as well. So the first step is really to get the cross slide uh, scale installed, and this is by far the most challenging part of the entire installation. You can see here basically this is the finished product and I will uh, show you some of the steps along the way that it took to get here. The first order of business is to adapt one of the uh, brackets that they include in the kit. Uh, it involves a bunch of machining on a mill. Uh, I use my CNC mill basically in manual mode to do this. And this bracket is attached to the cross slide and is used to hold the scale. You can see it here basically sandwiched between the cross slide and the scale. One of the decisions you have to make when you're installing the cross slide scale, uh, depending on the size of your lathe, is whether you install that scale vertically like I did or horizontally. Uh, horizontally uh, works a little bit better when you have a very little clearance uh, between the compound and the, uh, the saddle. Uh, I really didn't want the compromise of having uh, the exposed slot on the bottom of the glass scale. So I decided to go vertical, and it was a little more challenging because of that. Basically, this bracket uh, is mainly uh, intended to space the glass scale away from those gib adjustment screws that you can see there at the bottom. So I did this kind of off the cuff uh, and just measured where I needed to make clearances and then machine those spots away. Unfortunately, I don't have any drawings for this, but these kind of show the basic shape and idea. Um, there were the gib adjustment screws, there were some other other interference spots, so just a lot of test fitting and machining. I put a couple of holes in that bracket where I intended to mount it to the cross slide, and I just used my transfer punches and marked locations on the cross slide, and then just drilled and tapped them uh, using my cordless drill. So this is kind of the halfway point of the cross slide scale installation. Basically, the scale itself is now mounted uh, firmly to the cross slide, but the actual center head is not yet, and that's the next step. And for this part, they didn't really include anything in the kit that would work well, so this is just a chunk of aluminum that I had lying around, and again, I just did kind of on-the-fly engineering test fitting and machining until I got something that I was happy with. So you can see it's kind of gonna be an L-shaped bracket, uh, had to make some clearances in a number of places um, just so that uh, other parts of the machine would clear this bracket. Finding an exact placement for the scale and the reed head is a little bit tricky. You can see how close the bottom of the reed head comes to the uh, top of the ways there. Um, in the end, I was able to find a spot that just worked and gave me just enough clearance. And you can see I'm kind of fashioning the bracket to fit that. Just as with the other bracket, this needs to be mounted firmly to the saddle. And you can see I chose a couple of spots here up towards the front where I drilled and tapped a couple holes for some socket cap screws to go through. And again, we're looking here at the finished product. So you can see on the left, the two socket cap screws that mount down to the saddle. And on the right hand side, those two screws, which are not countersunk, um, go through and attach to the reed head. 
Now, it's vitally important uh, per the instructions that you get the correct spacing with that read head. Um, there's a little blue bracket that they have you use for that. Um, and this mount that I designed allows enough adjustment so you can get that correct. It's also vitally important that you dial in the height of that scale. So if you set up an indicator like I have here, you just run the uh, travel back and forth and you just make slight adjustments on one end or the other to make sure that it's perfectly level. With the cross slide complete, we can now move on to the longitudinal axis. Uh, this is thankfully quite a bit easier than the cross slide. Uh, I'd say I spent two thirds of my time on the cross slide and one third of my time on the longitudinal axis. And uh, you're gonna want access to the rear of your machine for this. So spin your machine around, uh, get some help with this if uh, you can. It's pretty tricky to do alone. Take off the chip tray and the splash guard from the rear and then you're basically ready to begin. So installing this bracket, which does come in the kit, onto the back of the saddle is a good first step. And this basically just involved uh, drilling a couple of holes in that bracket and uh, transfer punching and drilling and tapping a couple holes into the back of the saddle, as you can see here. Next up, I used a couple of 123 blocks and some Irwin quick clamps to hold the glass scale body onto the rear of the machine. And this was to mark and uh, transfer punch the locations for the mounting holes for the glass scale. Just as with the cross slide, it's super important to make sure that this scale is uh, flat and uh, completely parallel with the ways. So I have a dial test indicator mounted to a mag base on the uh, saddle and you can see that the tip of the indicator is running along the top of the scale here. Once the scale is dialed in and uh, bolted well onto the machine, uh, then all you need to do is attach the reed head to the bracket that you installed earlier. And again, this can pretty much all be done with parts that came in the kit. I might have needed to scrounge some screws or things like that, but uh, otherwise all the brackets themselves came in the kit. As one final nice touch, I decided to pop the electronics cabinet open on the back and wire in an IEC power cord uh, onto the contactor circuit so that when the uh, lathe is powered down via the e-stop switch, the DRO itself will also turn off. So start off by zeroing X and Z, and you can see when I move the long axis, the Z figure moves there at the bottom. And when I move the cross slide, the top number changes. You can also see that my lathe needs to be bolted down pretty badly. So this just shows the boot sequence. You can see it shows a version number and draw pros on the display. Uh, and after a short period, it's basically ready to go. Uh, I had this thing zeroed out before I shut it off, I believe. Uh, here's zeroing X and Z with a single button press. And here's how you enter in a specific value for either axis. So for example, you measured 1.234 on X. You just hit X, type in 1.234 and hit enter. You can do the same on the Z axis and it will uh, show you those figures uh, relative to that number from there on out. This D here indicates that the display is in diameter mode and the R slash D button in the lower right switches you between radius and diameter mode. So you can enter in 0.5 diameter, for example, and then switch to radius mode and see that it's actually 0.250. It does have some more advanced functionality like tool offsets. Uh, you can use it somewhat like a CNC tool table uh, in that you can select up to a couple hundred tools, I think, touch them off um, or enter in their length offsets and then recall those length offsets when you're working on a part. So if you have a quick change tool post and you haven't changed anything about where your uh, tool post is set, uh, you should be able to flip between a couple of different tools uh, using this and uh, it will store the relative length offsets for you. It also has two independent uh, measurement offsets, uh, absolute and incremental. Absolute typically you'd use for your overall part uh, offsets, and then say you were working on a feature within that and you wanted to have a separate set of working offsets, you could use the incremental mode. 
Uh, lastly, it does um, metric or inches, uh, basically with just a button press. And the only downside is that it doesn't very clearly indicate to you someplace that it's in metric mode, but uh, you lose a digit on the display, so it's somewhat obvious. So overall, I'd say my impressions are fairly positive. I think Drove Pros puts together a high quality kit. I think they've written great documentation for it, um, even though they really can't just give you specific instructions on how to install it on your particular lathe. Uh, they've done as much as they really reasonably can. Um, is it worth uh, paying the premium over, say, in a directly imported Chinese DRO from AliExpress? Um, maybe. Uh, I just kind of wanted the peace of mind of knowing the the kit was going to work and uh, there would be somebody there uh, to back it up. Is it worth spending $700 uh, to add DROs to a $1,200 lathe? That's probably debatable, but I think the DRO is going to make it so much faster to work with this machine. Uh, and I'm really trying to take a lot of steps uh, lately to optimize my, uh, my workshop and opt optimize my workflow. I don't have a ton of time always to get projects done. So I think any steps that I can take uh, to ease that uh, are gonna be worth it in the end. So time will tell. Uh, I really look forward to doing my next project using the DRO and just seeing how much more efficient I really end up being. Thanks a lot, I'll see you soon.